Okay, Mr. Paul, please, you can go ahead, start just uh, introducing yourself and uh, also introduce NADCA to us. And at 7.00 your time, which is 2 p.m. our time, start your presentation. Thank you very much. The mic is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, and can't thank you enough for uh, for having me here to speak uh, today. Um, it is uh, quite wonderful to hear how uh, indoor air quality, especially right now, is impacting the entire world, um, and especially to see how you guys are are uh, taking care of uh, indoor air quality as best as uh, you can in relation to everything that is going on. Because um, as, as COVID-19 is here, um, it has been the the best and the worst thing ever that, that we could experience within our industry um, to bring our industry to the forefront front and, and battlegrounds of being able to uh, provide even cleaner, healthier environments. Um, more of a background on myself is that I am a second generation duck cleaner. Um, I've learned this trade from my father. Uh, he had been, has, been, has been and still is doing this um, and, and uh, has been in this industry for almost 40 years. Um, I rely on him as a, a mentor and uh, for us it's been a great relationship. Um, I tried to run away from this industry and uh, here I am today, uh, um, 10 years uh, in and uh, have no signs of wanting to stop. Uh, this is something that I am passionate about, uh, that I have really enjoyed, um, especially in watching the advancements within our industry continue to grow. Uh, the science is becoming more clear. Uh, the case studies that, that uh, are, are going to be presented in the future um, uh, here in 2021 uh, will hopefully shed more light on, on current uh, standards and white papers um, that, that need to be addressed, um, you know, to, to upgrade our level of cleaning. Um, so for myself, um, I made sure that I had gone and got a, an apprenticeship um, to, uh, to become uh, uh, to have the more more uh, uh, experience to be able to go take a test for the, where I live here in the United States, um, as we are required to have an AC license to perform any kind of cleaning service uh, here in Florida. So it's not like that all the way throughout the United States, but those are things that I had to do to get to where I am now. Um, so that is a little bit of background on myself. Uh, NADCA, uh, the National Air Duct Cleaners Association, um, helped give credibility um, at a time when there wasn't any. And not only that, um, a collective group of individuals made sure that uh, the ACR, which is the standard we're going to um, speak about today, uh, helped bridge a gap in what is uh, someone else's protocol to cleaning, as, as was discussed uh, by Rami, and as well as uh, make sh making sure that um, there is a specific standard of protocol to for how to clean a system uh, with regards to the type of system, uh, to the material that the system is made out of, uh, to making, making sure that it's done in a safe and a systematic manner. So um, I, I do hope that uh, uh, you spend some time uh, uh, reading through the standard once I've completed this, uh, as there's a lot more information that uh, I may not get to um, within the standard. Uh, so please be aware um, that there is a little bit more light reading to do. And at the end, if there's for some reason that I cannot answer one of your questions um, at the very, very end, I will be sure to, to uh, uh, shoot an email back in um, if for some reason I, I with it with obviously with an answer if uh, I can't do it at this the particular time but uh, I welcome you to ask me as many questions as you would like um, you know more than happy to uh, to engage even after uh, this presentation is over so uh, um, again I, I do hope that uh, that you find this as enlightening as it has been for me within this industry uh, with the ACR standard that has continued to grow and evolve and uh, be a living document for how air duct cleaning or HVAC cleaning should be taking place 
uh, within a uh, system itself. Um, so uh, does that put me at the time to uh, start the, the presentation here? I think I still have a couple minutes left. Um, uh, let's see here. It is 6.59. All right, so let's go on ahead and uh, let's get started here. Um, let me move the screen a little bit so I can see as we are. Okay. All right. HVAC system cleaning in accordance with the NADCA standards. The HVAC system <clears throat> cleaning in accordance with the NADCA standards addresses three very important and vital areas. Uh, and let me go back here. Uh, discussing energy savings, improved system performance, improved indoor air quality. So it, back in the day, uh, especially uh, energy savings was not calculated. Um, improved system performance. There was no studies to, to show that this is, uh, uh, you're enhancing a system, even though we, we were doing this all along by the main reason why we were doing a cleaning was to improve the indoor air quality. Uh, when uh, individuals go in to restore a property, you know, the AC system is normally shut down. Uh, that's part of protocol uh, and, it's, and it's forgotten uh, within the standard um it, it it shows where this should should come into play uh to be able to get into uh uh adding the the cleaning aspect of what you're already cleaning uh within the particulate of the air uh the the system um the, the systems and the particulate that are within the systems continue to get blown out into the environment so these areas here are what the NADCA standard really focuses on. The benefits of cleaning the HVAC system. So the United States has a Department of Energy and they conducted a study here um, that heating and cooling accounts for almost half of the average of a home's utility costs. Um, that's not even speaking about a commercial facility. If you, if you look at the graph here, you can see 37% is based on, on heating, just trying to heat a property. 10% uh, down here to cooling. I mean, that 47 total percent of energy usage is just spent on trying to control an indoor environment. Uh, even in new buildings, whether it's a new building or a, a uh, older building, um, systems become dirty. Uh, they, they, ha they go through a construction process and not all construction has the engineering controls to be able to keep the building clean during the build out. Um, and these HVAC systems, um, when they become dirty, uh, they, they soil uh, the system. And, uh, and then everyday use, as we bring in fresh air, and as we're trying to understand especially more about COVID-19, um, we are reintroducing things into buildings now that, that they're going to have dramatic impacts on the HVAC system. Contaminated heating and cooling systems can be problematic for occupants contributing to poor indoor air quality, uh, system failures, and increased energy usage. Uh, this photo here on the left side of the screen uh, is a blower wheel. Um, a blower wheel has, has uh, accumulated uh, due to airflow uh, some kind of microbial growth, uh, and it's continuing to grow. And what happens is, is within the blades there, um, reduces the efficiency for air to pass uh, across a uh, heating or cooling surface. So if you're reducing the air that this system is supposed to be producing, you increase the likelihood of a system failure. 
when an HVAC system is clean, it doesn't have to work as hard to maintain the temperature you desire. As a result, less energy is used, leading to improved cost effectiveness. Cleaning coils, heat exchangers, heating coils, um, add an additional 10% to system performance. Uh, this, is, the, this source was, was found from the National Comfort Institute, which would be a good source to uh, refer back to um, for, for general information uh, regarding the comfort of, indoor air, uh, of an indoor space. Um, a buildup of almost half an inch, um, or yeah, half an inch of dirt on a heating coil can result in a decrease of efficiency of 21%. That, that's, that's significant. Um, and, and that was brought to us by the uh, Environmental Protection Agency. Here's a photo of that, uh, uh, that, that blower wheel again, just to show um, you know, the efficiency loss that, that you, would, you would see if, um, uh, if, it wasn't, if it was obviously dirty, not clean. Uh, here are some photos of some coils. Uh, to give you an idea of some of the soiledness that goes on with these coils, um, you know, here on this right side of the screen, you'll see this is more of a microbial growth base. This here may be more construction based. And, and if you look up in this upper corner, these filters, this is a filter bank. This coil is obviously is attracting all kinds of dirt and sediment within the system that is bypassing these filters. Uh, here is a A-frame coil. Um, just to show here, this is what the coil should look like. This is the growth pattern that has taken place, or I'm sorry, this is the buildup pattern that has taken place up here at the, the, the top of the, uh, the coil. Uh, let me move this on forward here. Um, Benefits of HVAC system cleaning. Wow, this is a big one. Sick, especially now, sick buildings and indoor air quality. Um, this is uh, just more information uh, that uh, uh, shows and examines uh, what happens uh, when a building becomes sick because of poor indoor air quality, which is things that you're aware of, but if you're taking care of just the general space and not taking care of the a distribution source like an HVAC system, you're just recontaminating, recontaminating an area and not fixing the entire problem. Um, I mean, and these numbers are very significant when you look at what would ha what happens in the case of uh, of a building being sick. So, um, case study article. Uh, this is a great one here. Uh, now to get out of the sick building, now to go into how we save energy. Uh, study verifies coil cleaning saves energy. This was done by Ross uh, Montgomery. Um, he's a member of ASHRAE as well as Robert Baker, also a member of ASHRAE. Uh, and this was done back in 2006. Uh, the, the study was, was that, uh, a system is built and put together by an engineer that is supposed to work within certain parameters. Uh, once the system starts to become fouled or soiled or have lots of contaminants within it, um, the system doesn't operate within the building envelope in some cases. And so uh, to maintain this, we always made sure we clean the HVAC air handling unit and ductwork as necessary. Um, one of the best things that we ever did um, was to be able to take uh, uh, the coil and isolate it and actually do a case study, which they did, to show how much money was being saved possibly just by cleaning the coil. The study was conducted in a 34 floor 1.2 million dollar or 1.2 million square foot building in Times Square, New York, um, supplied by four air handling units totaling 575 tons of heating and cooling. Cleaning the coil showed 25% increase in efficiency, giving back almost 100 tons of cooling lost to dirty coils that had been cleaned the previous year. I mean, within one year, 
this, this stuff got this dirty. Restoring one of the air handling units resulted in an estimated yearly savings of $40,000. This, this is beyond significant. The study cites other soft positive results that come from cleaning and normal maintenance operations. Increased HVAC system performance. The, these systems aren't uh, working as hard. Uh, and cleaner HVAC systems do not provide an environment for fungal bacteria and microbial growth in their coils and ducts. Therefore, less sick time, but less time that people were calling in to not come into work. Um, so based off that study and going back to an original photo, especially here where you can see the before and after photo, what impact do you think this will have on the system? What kind of energy efficiency did we just create within the system? How much money was saved? What kind of indoor air quality did we just enhance? Those things are now becoming very measurable and are a, a very high priority, especially now within the cleaning of an HVAC system. So just, just more benefits of cleaning HVAC system. A, Pacific Gas and Electric uh, PG&E study shows that a dirty condenser coil can increase compressor energy consumption by 30%. A dirty condenser coil uh, that raises condensing temperatures from 95 degrees Fahrenheit to 105 degrees Fahrenheit cuts cooling capacity by 7% and increases power consumption by 10% with a net efficiency reduction of 16%. All it is just working so much harder in a 10 ton unit operating 2,000 hours a year, this wastes about $250 per year in operating costs. I mean, that, that becomes quite significant if these things can just be taken care of on a normal maintenance program for cleaning. Filtration, oh, filtration. Uh, is it time for a change? I mean, I don't know how long that that filter was left in the system, but could you imagine how hard that unit was working just to cool or heat that space? <clears throat> Here's another benefit of an HVAC system clean to put more of a perspective uh, as an approximation for what things normally cost here in US dollars. Uh, typical costs of replacing the following component uh, this is a, about a seven and a half ton rooftop unit uh, uh, that we have. Um, and the coil, if the coil fails or becomes too dirty and you, and you can't clean it properly, you could be looking at a $1,500 repair. The condenser coil, if, if it becomes oversaturated with uh, contaminants that don't allow it to function air properly through it, there's a $1,500 repair. Now we're up to $3,000. Condenser fan motor, there's two of them here in this seven and a half ton, $350 each, there's $700. Compressor, $1,200. I, I mean, you see how all these systems that can fail, and if it gets to the point where it's not maintained properly, an entire replacement could cost almost 10,000 US dollars. That's quite significant if all they had to do over time was just clean the components with inside this system. A typical maintenance checkup is recommended and includes the following components, component inspection and cleaning. This is done, this is by the Energy Star. Uh, check and inspect the condensate drain, clean evaporator and condenser air conditioning coils, clean and adjust blower components. Now, here's where we get into what we want to talk about, the, the ACR, the NADCA standard. The ACR stands for assessment, cleaning, and restoration. And here, here it is. The standard provides you practical, 
reliable and industry-backed information for assessing new and existing HVAC systems, evaluating and verifying, which is the it's just part of assessing the cleanliness of HVAC systems, guiding the cleaning and restoration of HVAC systems to a specific level of cleanliness. There is a free download for this for you guys if you go to nadka.com to be able to download this in different languages to be able to have this as a standard. Um, helps determine the need to clean. Helps you have a clear scope of work. So you're not guessing as to what you should have to do. Provides protocols to protect the safety of building occupants and prevent cross-contamination. Helps you understand proper cleaning procedures. Provides quantifiable methods for verifying cleanliness so that you can prove what you did actually improve the indoor air quality. So determining the need to clean. It is recommended that the HVAC systems be cleaned be clean when a proper cleanliness inspection or building history indicates one or more of the following conditions in the HVAC system contaminated with an accumulation of particulate, performance is compromised due to a contamination buildup, it has been determined to be a source of unacceptable odors, discharging visible dirt or debris into the conditioned space, has been contaminated as a result of fire, smoke, and or water damage, has been infested with birds, rodents, insects, or their byproducts, has been determined to be at risk for a fire hazard, has become contaminated with construction debris or dust. It is recommended that the HVAC systems clean, be cleaned when a proper cleanliness inspections or building history indicates one or more of the following conditions yet again. Mold contamination, which have reached conditions two or three. Um, this is what I mean by conditions two or three are here um, in the IICRC S520. Deterioration of fiberglass duct liner, duct board, or other porous components. Again, now we're talking about the type and of material that the ductwork is made out of. HVAC maintenance program as defined by ANSI ASHRAE standard 180. As part of the HVAC equipment manufacturers, manufacturers re recommended maintenance practices, as part of proactive energy management program, as part of proactive indoor air quality management program, as a component to achieve lead lead certification. When a newly installed component or duct has been contaminated with construction and or other dust and debris. And as you can see through here, all, all I did was basically give you more things to go read up on as for determining the need to clean based off of certain parameters that you would find within these other standards. What will you find in the standard? The ACR standard has five sections that flow like a project. First, do an inspection. Then, create work plans. Next, place engineering controls in place. This would be like your air scrubbers, uh, HEPA filtrated uh, negative air units. Then we perform the cleaning and restoration procedures based off what we created from the work plan. <coughs> Lastly, we verify the cleanliness. HVAC cleanliness inspection schedule. So 
these are when we should go back through this. Right here, residentials one year, commercials one year, industrials one year, healthcare is one year, marine is one year. But please look here, we start focusing in on certain aspects, whether it's air handling unit, supply duct work, return ducts and exhaust duct work, these intervals change. This is a good graph to always refer back to when determining the need for cleaning. <coughs> Provides guidance for the cleaning and restoration of HVAC systems to a specific level of cleanliness, including air handling unit restoration, coil cleaning, resurfacing and coating, And there's three methods of cleanliness verification. The first one is just visual, what you see. It, does it look dirty? Method two, surface comparison test. And method three, the NADCA vacuum test. NADCA's general specification in CSI 3 part format describes minimum requirements to coordinate a successful commercial HVAC system cleaning project. This is another free download that you guys can get at nadca.com. All right. General cleaning requirements. What's included? This is a flow chart to just go through in this order how to evaluate general re cleaning requirements. Guidance on developing a proper scope of work, standards to be referenced, required submittals prior to cleaning, closeout, and quality assurance. Uh, these are things that maybe you have to give to that, that building owner or uh, the property owner uh, or, or whoever may be asking for certain items. Product sections, guidance on execution of the cleaning project and proper cleaning procedures, prevention of cross-contamination, quantifiable methods for verifying cleanliness. Within the ACR, there's certain terms that will be used and they, NADCA did a wonderful job of clarifying these things to make sure there was no misunderstanding as to what they mean by certain items. So in this case, visibly clean. An interior surface is considered visibly clean when it's free from non-adhered substances and debris. Definition, what is non-adhered? Any material not intended or designed to be present in an HVAC system, which can be removed by contact vacuuming. If you see here, this individual is inside of a duct with a vacuum, vacuuming up this debris that is there. It's not supposed to be there. Source removal techniques. The mechanical clean cleaning of system components to remove dirt and debris requires two key elements to be effective. Agitation of dust and debris within the HVAC system. Extraction of contaminants from the HVAC system. So <laughs> this first photo here shows a level of agitation. This agitation can be done by this, a brush of this type. It can be done with a means of, uh, of air whips. It can be done with a means of uh, uh, contact vacuuming. That is the agitation portion of source removal. Uh, the extraction portion you can see here is a negative air unit uh, set up within the duct system. So as you are agitating the surfaces with the components I just mentioned, that you are then pulling it through a HEPA filtration where it's then exhausted to a proper location. Negative pressure. 
That's used to prevent debris from entering the occupied space or leaving the contained area. <coughs> if you notice here, the way we go about our cleaning so far from what you might be able to see is that it coincides with a lot of the stuff that you already do within indoor air quality and how you clean up an air space. Now we're just taking a lot of that and putting it into the HVAC system. So the negative pressure used to prevent debris from entering the occupied space or leaving the contaminated area. Prior to and throughout the duration of the cleaning process, the HVAC system and associated air duct shall be kept at an appropriate negative pressure differential relative to the indoor non-work area. Basically saying that we're gonna control the environment in which we are cleaning. Service openings. Access duct cleaning, access duct cleaning work through existing or new service openings, allowing safe access and through cleaning throughout specified components. Openings are to be installed so they will not degrade structural, thermal, or the function of the system's integrity and comply with applicable SMACNA standards and duct construction methods. Uh, SMACNA is another uh, 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 HVAC, uh, uh, it's a good way to explain this, is that uh, SMACNA standards are a way that we conform to making sure that ductwork is installed properly. And so um, certain areas, uh, these service openings, this is a door that they use. It's just specially made for this kind of a duct. Uh, so that way we, we cut into it to clean it. We have a way of putting it back together. So that way um, the system still forms, functions the way it's supposed to. Employ engineering controls to maintain worker and building occupant safety to prevent contaminating surfaces outside work area. So here you can tell that within the area of where the work is about to begin, one, two, three, four, four air scrubbers have been put in place, negative air units, um, in this case more so air scrubbers, uh, to be able to control this environment while a cleaning takes place to re reduce any cross-contamination that, that may be going on from duct cleaning. Proper cleaning procedures. Cleaning work should flow the pathway of the HVAC system's design. So I noticed it in, a, in the previous uh, uh, session that there were arrows that showed the air coming in and the air going out. Here, our cleaning process takes place of cleaning the return, return intakes first. So if any area where the air gets sucked in, cleaning the air handling unit and its components. And then lastly, working downstream of the air to clean up the supply trunk line and all the branch that come, that come out. Because it doesn't make any sense to do these things oppositely, especially if you gotta turn the system back on the same day. This work sequence, when properly performed, is designed to reduce the likelihood of clean portions of the ventilation system becoming recontaminated. <coughs> Provides guidance for proper cleaning of HVAC system components, including but not limited to air handling units, air duct systems, coils, internally insulated components, sound attenuators. There's there's more components than this that the ACR addresses to be cleaned um, within the standard. The HVAC system cleaning can yield positive results. Increased energy savings and efficiencies, these are measurable items. Extended life expectancy of HVAC systems and components and improvements in indoor air quality. Again, there, there again, there's the download uh, at the uh, natca.com to be able to get a, a free copy. Summary, again, uh, proper HVAC system cleaning can result in energy savings, improved system performance, improved indoor air quality, uh, 
the ACR, the standard, and the NADCA general specification provide guidance on cleaning requirements and methods for proper HVAC system cleaning. And both of those documents can be found within NADCA.com by being able to, to go to the search. There's a little search portal um, by typing that in there. All right, let's see what, uh, if you have any questions here. Um, Thank you, you, Mr. Paul. Thank you very much. Okay. We will open now the the uh, door for questions, and we have Mr. Paul a question for you. Uh, Mr. Jafar Azim, he's asking you okay. about how can we clean the blast valves. Okay, and I may be a little bit unfamiliar with what you're referring to with a blast valve. Um, is this the, it's the kind of the, the area? Kind, it's the kind of damper, Mr. Mr. Paul. It's a kind of damper that will be put in the fresh air intakes or some exhaust to protect the building from the blast wave. But it's acting like consider it as a volume damper, something like that. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So, um, so the question would be: Is is uh, you you would need to see how you can access it. Okay, to see what kind of accessibility you have to it. From there, um, there's mechanical means of which you can get to that uh, damper, uh, which I would assume that has, they're either gravity-based or they are pneumatic, where you can uh, adjust uh, as, as a damper is, is concerned, you can drop it, clean both, clean both sides, as long as you have access to it. And it just, it just, there's gonna there's there's probably not enough information there for me to answer that correctly, um, because I'm assuming you're just you're cleaning the blast valve based off of dust and dirt that's that's accumulated on on it over time to make sure it doesn't jam. Is that what I'm understanding? 